Hello world and welcome back to another immersive engineering tutorial where today we're going to be talking all about conveyor belts. So in the previous tutorial I just narrowly touched onto the conveyor belt systems when it comes to making the metal press and a little bit with the garden cloche. So let's cover that again very quickly and then we'll move into all the new conveyors that you can actually get inside of immersive engineering. So starting with the regular belts we have got three pieces of leather, one, two iron ingots and one redstone dust. This will give you eight conveyor belts and now these conveyor belts can also have a cage put around them as you can actually get stuck on these conveyor belts as you can see here and they're a little bit hard to actually walk off so you can actually cover them so you don't get stuck to them all that is required is one um, conveyor belt and one steel scaffolding and it will get covered it's a one-to-one -one thing for this so you'd have to make a steel scaffolding for everything but as you can see over here I cannot be dragged on this bit but when I'm on the actual conveyor I get dragged just a little bit now something else with these scaffolds is that you can't actually climb up them so um, it doesn't work like conventional scaffold in regular Minecraft so here we've got two setups one is just obviously demonstrating we've got conveyors in a line and that we've got the seal scaffolding the other is that we've got this little bit of a lip but it's not really joining so first let's go over how we actually place down conveyors this is going to be the exact same for every single type of conveyor belt we're going to be looking at starting with looking at the floor as you can see we have four different directions we can place down our conveyor belt depending on where we're looking on the block this is going to determine the direction the conveyor belt is going so if you want everything in the same direction make sure it's pointing all the same direction you obviously can place it down facing inwards but everything would just get stuck in this centerpiece here. Now something you can do as well is if you want to join two conveyor belts together you can join it and the bar will actually get removed, the skirting of the bar will actually get removed so the conveyor belts can join together as you can see. And you can do this in all directions at any point and to any different location if you so wish and also they block areas off if need be. As well as this using our engineer's hammer if we look at a conveyor belt and right click we can actually rotate where we have our conveyor belt so depending on if we placed it down slightly wrong we could just rotate it as need be. Now to demonstrate how we have this little hump here you can go up and down with the conveyor belts. If you hold down shift and then right click with the engineer's hammer you can see that it does start turning into a bit of a 45 degree angle to go up one block and this can be done stationary it doesn't have to link if you just did shift here as you can see it still goes up and just completely skips this. If we do shift again it's actually going to start pointing downwards so shift once shift click once or shift right click sorry once to go up shift click twice to make it go down and then if you do it a third time it goes back to normal so this is where you would do it here you would do once then twice and now we can go over the little hump now when it comes to conveyors and you want to go up you're probably going to think of two different things now as you can see one's working flawlessly the other one doesn't really so you may think that you could just do a constant conveyor up like this where everything's constantly vertical to make it the shortest route now it can work but it's quite unreliable and also if you have loads of blocks together obviously Minecraft they can stick together and they can end up jumping off the side but this is actually very unreliable as you can see it will work very very few times but it's quite rare what you really want to do is go up a little bit then have a right angle and a corner and then it will keep going as you can see here I have it just dropping off the end so it constantly keeps going and it always falls just about a block as you can see I only have a block block gap here and it gets to the other side but then it catches itself so it goes back up so now we know how to actually join your belts together but what about splitting a conveyor apart this is where the splitting conveyor belt comes in who would have thought for this you're going to need three conveyor belts in a triangle and then one iron ingot and this will give you three splitting conveyor belts you can stack these up to 64 and the splitting conveyor belt also has a steel cage cover variant as well and this is again a one-to-one -one craft so here we have set up a little thing we have got two conveyor belts merging into one and then it's being split over there so if we place one on this side as you can see it would split this will go either left or right it's gone left oh it's gone right sometimes it's a little bit of a visual bug but in in the code it is doing the right thing and then if we go in from the right here it's gone left as you can see so it always does it 50 50 it will choose one then the other then one then the other it will literally alternate your things but if you had multiple items on here it would do it on a quantity basis not on an item basis so if we say we had 64 levers here if I put a lever in here it's gonna go right and then this one should go left as you can see but if we did cobblestone it would go right and then with the lever it will go left because it, it won't take into account what the item is just that it's the next one in the system so it's always going to do left and right so you really you don't want to mix belts 
So if I took a stack of 64 here, what it's actually going to do is take all 64 and place it one direction. It won't actually split it. It's only when it's individual, which is another reason why when you're doing conveyor belts, you want to have them spaced out a little bit on the conveyor belts because they can actually get to a point where um, the items are churning together and then it won't be doing it as easily. So you really want them spaced out. So now if we do a test where we drop 32, we wait a bit and then we drop the other 32, we can see that two stacks have completely split up and it will make the one stack in total again. Nothing's been lost. Now the last thing is that with the engineer's hammer, you can also rotate these as well. But remember, you can't actually use the spitter as a joiner. You have to have run two belts into each other to actually have belts join up. Also, if you shift right click, the splitter cannot be placed on a vertical like regular conveyor belts can. So we know basic conveyor belts now and how to bring them up and down, but what if we don't want to make a big ugly staircase like this? This is where vertical conveyor belts come in. This is going to require three conveyor belts and two iron ingots to give you three vertical conveyor belts. And these can also be stacked up to 64. As well as that, the vertical conveyor belts can also have a steel scaffolding variant if you put a steel scaffolding on top of it and it will just be a one to one. So vertical conveyor belts are very, very cool. As you can see, they work completely against the wall, but they can also also be just done on top of each other it can just be absolutely in the open as you can see here now the cool thing about the conveyor belts is that if you actually stay on the conveyor belt the vertical ones will actually take you up as well which is very handy if you want just a way up and down where you can afk it's a little bit better than a conveyor uh, a ladder but obviously it's a little bit more expensive and with the steel cage of course it will not pull you up because you obviously cannot get inside now the only downside to the con these conveyor belts is that they can't actually go down. If you right click on it, it will just rotate around one block and if you hold shift, it doesn't exactly change direction. So there's no way of really actually going down on this. So just to demonstrate how this works, I've got one completely on its side. You can see one side's going down because it's a conveyor belt and the other one is going straight up. So if I throw down these blocks here, we can see that they are going to be going up one at a time. They sort of stay in line with their uh, thing here it's pretty cool and then they just drop off the edge they're not being nicely brought down next is moving things in and out of storage blocks first we're going to cover the extractor conveyor to make the extractor conveyor you're first going to need these stripped curtains stripped curtains are made using steel rods and some tough fabric and you will get three of these per craft something cool about these stripped curtains is that you place them on the block above and you can actually use them as a little bit of a covered doorway if you so wish you can walk through them then you're going to need one conveyor, one treated wood and a iron mechanical component and this will give you the extractor conveyor belt as you see here. You only get one of these per craft. Now as well as this, the extractor conveyor also has a steel scaffold covering and this is again a one to one. These will come in stacks of 64 as well. So the structure conveyor is very simple. We've got two setups here, one's covered, one isn't. They both work exactly the same. You take in your or any item, we'll just do cobblestone for now, place it in here and it'll start extracting. Now the cool thing about regular conveyor belts, these regular conveyor belts, they will automatically go into a chest as long as it's through the side. It won't go through the bottom or the top. Then as well as this, we're just going to show quickly inside of here we have got loads of cobblestone going with the caged one as well now with the hammer you can right click and this will just rotate it nothing else it will just rotate you can't shift right click and it won't change directions or it won't turn into an inserter following from the extractor we now also have the dropper conveyor belts this is using one conveyor belt and a trap door and you only get one of these per craft and this also has a caged version if you use a piece of steel scaffold on top now the cool thing about the dropper is this can also be used to actually insert things but through the top so as you can see here we've got a little bit of a conveyor belt going up and then it just goes around the corner as you can see here so if I just drop my stack of 64 cobblestone here it'll get to the dropper and just insert itself into the chest so if you wanted to have one long line of different barrels you can put all these different chests down and it will start placing things and when it's full it move to the next to the next to the next and if this chest was completely full what would happen is um everything would just pass over it and it would continue it wouldn't actually drop anything because it can't go through as you can see there now the dropper is not only used for inserting things, it's also good for changing lanes. And what I mean by this is if we have a floating conveyor belt here, we see that it's dropping after this block here. So if I place down this stack, what we'll do it will drop down and move to the next layer of conveyor belts. It's similar to with the vertical conveyor belt, you could use this to go straight up, but with the dropping conveyor, you use this to go straight down. Now, if there was enough space in here for a dropper, and I actually had this placed over here, just like so, what can happen 
is if I place this 64 stack, it will actually drop completely vertically and go straight into the chest. It won't keep going round because everything drops perfectly in line. Now with the engineer's hammer, this can obviously be rotated and this can actually be put on a slant and go up or down so you can drop just like this. Now the very last conveyor belt we have is the redstone controlled conveyor belt. It just requires one conveyor belt and a redstone torch and you only get one of these per craft. Now this conveyor belt system only has one use in total and that is for turning on and off your conveyor belts. However, it only does it on the one specific block. So I've placed it down here, we just have a run. If I place down a lever and then turn it on, you can see that the animation stops. This means this is no longer working, you can turn it on again. Now if I place one of these down just by itself, let's have it facing going this way, you can see that we actually have it on the end. For some, for some reason there's a little bit of a visual bug. If you hold shift right click, you can switch between sides and if you right click then you just uh, rotate it as you can see here. Now it's actually acting a little bit more how it should. It seems that only one direction is just a little bit bugged. No idea why but you can see where the hitbox is. It's just a visual thing. Now regardless of where the hitbox actually is you can actually compile this from any side and you have a little bit of an indication here to see when it's meant to. Now I believe you're meant to be able to put a lever directly onto this red dot similar to when you have other machines with the redstone and engineering block but for whatever reason it's just not doing it and the only thing that this does is turn the conveyor belt on and off so just as a demonstration here as you can see it's going 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 if i stop it it will just completely stays in its tracks it could build up and then you could do, go it on again so you could set up some sort of system say you had uh, an item silo um that ha had it was nearly full and you had a comparator on it the item silo could then send out a signal to this to say when it's full and then it would stop sending stuff on the conveyor belt to that line. Obviously it would not re-divert your conveyor belts which I think would be a little bit better if you had some way of having it switch direction but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be the case. It doesn't even say anything like that in the book. It says it purely that it is to stop the belt from working and like here you go disable with redstone signal. Now the very last item that we're going to show off today and it's one that I only just discovered existed is the chute. It's not specifically a conveyor belt itself, but it's meant to be used with the conveyor belt system. Now the sheet metal chute is made using iron sheet metal, but there are many different types. You can make the steel, uh, you can make you can make aluminium and you can make copper chutes if you so wish. They just use any six of the same sheet metal on the sides you can see here and you actually get 12 of these chutes. Now something really cool about them is that they are also used with um, direct insertion into chests as you can see here. So here we have a dropper system. It's going into a dropper and this will go straight down. So if we see we have nothing inside the chest at the moment, if we now put 64 onto here, if I turn that off, if we put 64 onto here, this will now drop it straight down and it will just insert it into it. As you can see here, if we didn't have the chute there, it would not actually put it straight into it. It would just sit on top, as you can see here. So the chute actually inserts directly into things. Now, something else that is really cool is that if you place it in line with your conveyor belt, it will actually open up a corner, as you can see here. So you can do this. Obviously, it's not going into that direction, but if I rotate this, you can see it now opens opens up so it's meant to be used directly and any sides will open as well as that is if you place a shoot down I'll put it just on here just to show you off if you hold shift and right click you can actually angle your shoot and then you can rotate it to wherever you would like it so what we've got set up here we have a chest just on the corner here and a shoot that is facing directly into the side of this chest so what should happen is that it should the cobblestone should ride along go into the shoot and then go directly into the chest we see we have nothing in the chest as of right now so if we get ourselves some cobblestone stone here place that down here this should go directly inside you see it falls down and it goes in we even get a little bit of a splash there as well so here we go we've got our cobblestone now there's some other cool things about the shoot now this is what it says in the book so i'm going to quote it here items within the in them won't be picked up by players and should be immune to most forms of attraction be that magnetic or magical as you can see here. So that means if you had, say, a uh, vacuum hopper or something or some sort of magical magnetic item attractor thing, it will actually negate that from happening and it will stay with inside of the chute, which I think is really, really cool. Now, the last thing we're going to show off is just with the chute, we can see that it's going to continue as long as that I, even if I don't have the chest there, it will just fall down and will continue going. It also gives us a little bit of sound. So you can use either the dropper, even though it's going to be a little bit accurate, the more you fall from over there to there, one drop is probably enough as we demonstrated earlier but if it was a long run you probably want the shoot also it seemed to be a little bit quicker as well and a little less glitchy 
Now, unfortunately, that is everything that I have to show off today when it comes to conveyor belts. There's a lot here, but it's very, very cool, and it's a little bit better than pipes, in my opinion. It's a little bit more real, so I really like conveyor belts. But if this video helps you out in any way, should perform, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out, and ring the bell button for more tutorials in the future. As next time, we're going to be covering all about immersive engineering tools and some of the very cool items and weapons you can get inside of immersive engineering. But until next time, guys, take care.